Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, feeling well, and having a fantastic weekend. Got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise for tomorrow. We're not really going to speak on what's happening right now. There's a lot of great people out there on YouTube that do the weather, that go live during the events that's going on right now. And we do have some active weather ongoing with some strong and severe storms for a lot of the country, a lot of areas of the south uh, this afternoon and this evening. So uh, definitely stay safe with what's going on. But we're going to speak on what could potentially happen tomorrow. There's going to be a pretty large area that could see a chance and have a a pretty a pretty high chance to see some strong to severe storms. There's a lot of areas that will get some beneficial rain uh, that have not seen a lot of rain over the last uh, several weeks. So we'll talk on that. We'll get detailed on that. Talk about how much rain is possible over the next two days. And we'll try to figure it out for you folks. Not going to hold you guys up long this evening. Um, if you notice low energy or anything from me, it's been a long day. Just been outside hanging out with the kids and playing in the water, getting some sun and uh, doing a little bit of yard work while I've been at it. I went to a trampoline park today also, so that will wear a 31 year out, 31 year old sl uh, slap out. And it certainly did for me because I act like a big kid out there. I'm definitely not one of those adults that just kind of stand and watch their kids. I'm very active. Uh, but that was fun. But regardless, we'll get, get our, uh, we'll get our, We'll get on through this, can't talk right, and uh, we'll get you guys some good information. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly can, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it, and you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray, o pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below. So I can pray over it, and so others can do so too. Let's get rolling here. Um, we have a slight risk of severe storms for tomorrow. Pretty large area, highly populated area. Uh, Little Rock, Memphis, Nashville, Tennessee, all the way up to central Kentucky, all the way back to almost far eastern Oklahoma. Then we have a slight risk right here, which includes areas of the Front Range and uh, southeast Colorado, the Panhandle of Oklahoma, and northern sections of the Panhandle of Texas. Marginal risk extends all the way from north Texas, areas that's under the gun right now, all the way up to central Ohio. So there's going to be a lot of people who's going to see some storm action tomorrow. Uh, tornado risk with this, there is two areas to watch. There's... Um, well, it's really the two areas that we're going to discuss, but uh, each area respectfully has its own risk of a tornado. There's a 2% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location. I'll talk about what area I'm the most concerned about with the tornado threat really on this area right here, which will be the dominant topic of this video is really breaking down this risk area right here. So the wind threats for tomorrow, two areas. And both areas have a 15% risk of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. So as of right now, just the 15% risk of that happening in both of these yellow areas. Hail threat, both areas in the entire slight risk area have a 15% risk um, of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger in both of these areas. So hail will be a concern tomorrow. No hatched risk up for anything right now. So uh, they're saying that they're not thinking that anything's going to reach significant levels, but that could change in the next update or two coming into the overnight hours. We take a look at kind of what's driving this at 500 millibars, uh, pressure gradients, things like that. And I'll try to explain this the best way I can. Um, but the blue is the troughing. Uh, the orange up here, that is ridging. Okay, so what's going on? We'll start off this evening. We got troughing in general over the entire eastern U.S. Uh, but what's going to happen overnight, <clears throat> excuse me, is you're going to get a closed off upper level low somewhere over the Great Lakes region, right over like Lake Superior, somewhere up here. Um, at the base of this digging upper trough right here, the base of this upper low, you have a surface low uh, that is going to fire off down here. Now, this surface low, everything below the surface low is going to have ingredients for severe weather. If you're along it or above it, you're probably going to get rain, but the storms probably won't have the ingredients needed for severe weather. A great way you can see this in the flow at 500 millibars is if you look at these uh, pressure gradient lines right here. And if you look at these numbers, like this is a 564, this is a 573, things like that. The, basically, the lower this number gets, the uh, the lower the pressure is, okay? Um, so it makes sense that if you see this little area of really dark blue right here, the pressure is lower right up here. But if you see this extension of this darker blue right in here, that indicates 
kind of a kink in the flow. There's a little bit of a weak surface low. And if you look at these lines, a great way you can always tell is if these little lines get kind of kinked up like this, you know there's some kind of piece of energy right there. That's the best way to explain it. I love using the term energy. Uh, it's a very simple way to explain kind of what's going on. And you see this kink right in here. You still see it kind of, you don't see it as much right here, but you, you basically have a weak low pressure right here over areas of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, really the Midwest, like Illinois, moving out of Missouri into Illinois and Indiana. Okay, you can really see it here. This is, you know, around tomorrow, late afternoon, evening time frame. You see how you have these little, uh, little buckles right here in these lines. There's definitely some big time storm activity probably going on right here based off looking at 500 millibars, some kind of low pressure right into here. And this keeps going and you're probably, you, you see how, you see even look down here, you see how you have like these little buckles all the way down in the Carolinas. That's a great way to see it. There's probably going to be storms down here too. Okay. There's pieces of energy all into here sparking uh, shower and storm activity and with a very moist environment down here that will be there you're definitely going to have it so let's talk about how could it unfold as far as radar and i got pivotal weather up i don't like using this as far as reflectivity showing how it can unfold but honestly it had the best geographical location option that i could use so i'm going to use it here but i'm going to tell you overnight tonight i mean the rain is and, and storm activity can move into areas of missouri Rain will be moving into the wee hours of the morning to Illinois. You have maybe, maybe in um, kind of a more organized cluster of shower and storm activity somewhere in Kentucky, central Tennessee, it's possible. And here's that low pressure that I just talked about on the 500 millibar map. Uh, here it is, 1,004 millibar low pressure, surface pressure, surface low pressure moving in. And I mean, you're starting to get into about daybreak now. The sun is coming up. And I think you'll already be, will have a ton of of shower activity much needed rain in missouri illinois um now we all know the h triple r model is not always golden and it's not always terrible either but this is what this run of the model is saying is going to be going on i think we'll be dealing with a lot of rain activity in the midwest and then even in the areas of the ohio valley even mid-south but as we get into later into the morning hours you can already have i think it'll be very moist the atmosphere will be very unstable down here in the deep south so you're already having by late morning, mid to late morning, numerous downpours popping up in Alabama, Georgia, where you just kind of have that general risk, marginal risk, the general risk of storms. And I'll be honest, I think this marginal risk will get extended into South Carolina. I really do think it will. I think you're going to, I think we're going to get some strong and severe storms possible all the way into the Carolinas tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Uh, but we keep this going. We get into about midday. There's that low pressure right here. Anybody along and I would say north of this low pressure, this is going to be good old-fashioned rain. Uh, definitely a rainy Sunday afternoon from Illinois to Indianapolis all the way through Ohio. You get south of this low pressure, these could be storms. And we keep going through the afternoon. And this is when it gets tough to figure out. I mean, we're at this point around 3, 4, 5 p.m. I think you could have some strong to severe storms somewhere in northern Arkansas, maybe southern Missouri. Uh, anywhere throughout Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, even though you don't see it down here, I think it could be there. Kentucky, uh, there's, I think there's going to be a gradient somewhere in Kentucky where you'll have the ingredients for severe weather, and then if you get too far north into Kentucky, the ingredients cut off. But we keep this going, and I mean, you get into about late afternoon, evening time frame, I think it'll be a rocky evening for a lot of the Mid-South portions of the Ohio Valley. I think you'll have clusters of storms anywhere from Memphis, Nashville, Chattanooga, Huntsville, Alabama, maybe down to Birmingham, Atlanta, Columbia, maybe even Charlotte later in the evening. Um, you could have two rounds of storms, um, but you can, I mean, look at these storms at the bottom of your screen down here near Augusta, Columbia. I mean, latest, I would say two days ago, Sunday was not looking like a very stormy day for like South Carolina, but the models have really uptrended with the fact that we're going to have a lot of storm activity even down here. But, I mean, you even get um, into kind of the overnight hours around midnight and after, you're still got a lot of shower and storm activity. Down here in Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, um, northern Louisiana. So, I mean, a, a, lot of, a lot of activity still ongoing, and then it's done. Um, and then it starts to diminish and heads all the way to the Gulf Coast. I think we're going to have rounds of this over the next several days. But if you look at the ingredients, we we'll start off this afternoon. You build into Sunday morning. With this low pressure nearby, anybody in the 50s, dew points in the 40s and 50s, uh, it's probably more so a stable atmosphere. Once you get into the 60s, you start kind of 
uh, heading on down the Mississippi, you get down to Tennessee, Kentucky, very moist air, right? You're getting all the way to about midday Sunday. Dew points all the way into the 70s. And southern sections of Indiana, Illinois, you got kind of an, a nose of high moisture all the way up into central Ohio, which is probably why you have a marginal risk of severe storms all the way up into central Ohio. It, it, it's, it shows it pretty well on the dew point map. And these aren't temperatures, these are dew points. Very moist air surging into South Carolina and the Piedmont of North Carolina later tomorrow afternoon. And this will be a typical summer type atmosphere tomorrow for sure. Um, very moist air in the south and all the way up the Mississippi Valley, all the way up to the Ohio Valley regions. So a lot of moist air to work with. But as you are getting into the late evening hours... Okay, uh, cold front starts to surge through and it stabilizes this entire atmosphere. But how far how far south does this cold front dig? I don't think it makes it that far south. I think it stalls out. And I think as we're waking up Monday morning, everybody in this region, no storms probably. But if you get south of this frontal boundary, I think you're going to get big storms. Right now, just a large marginal risk for, um, for Monday. You look at the energy in the atmosphere, Cape, um, storm fuel is what I like to call it. Um, it's already building into Kentucky. You already got Cape values, you know, almost pushing 2000 joules per kilogram mixed layer Cape. Uh, so fuel's building very quickly. You got a ton of fuel down here in Arkansas, um, and Mississippi, but you might have a little bit of a cap in place preventing big time storm development in this region. The closer you are to that low pressure, you're definitely going to get storms, but of course you get too far North. I mean, you go from you know, around Lexington, Kentucky, Cape above, well above 1,000 joules per kilogram, and then you head up into, I mean, southern sections of Indiana, and you go to zero, much more stable atmosphere. But you keep this going here, and um, definitely a lot of fuel in the deep south for storms. I mean, I, mean, I think the only region that re reason you guys do not have, we don't have a marginal risk here in South Carolina, is because there's not a lot of fuel to the atmosphere building into this region. So... It's saying, yeah, you guys might get some storms, but we're not buying this intense line of storms moving through the South Carolina. I think I think you are going to get some storms in South Carolina, especially western areas where Cape is able to build. But how fast how fast is this moist air building in South Carolina tomorrow afternoon? That's going to be a that's going to be a big um, question as far as storms into the Carolinas. We look at kinematics, which is the flow aloft. What does the winds look like aloft that supports damaging winds or a tornado threat? Well, with this low pressure right into here, okay, you're definitely going to have a little bit of a a mid to low level jet out here. And this is the mid level jet, 500 millibars. So you definitely got a strong flow. So to me, this definitely supports damaging winds. You got a 30, 40 knot mid level jet, but it really increases in Arkansas. So I would say late tomorrow afternoon to the evening hours, if you get any storms that get going in Arkansas, I think you had the best chance for a tornado threat into this region right into here. And also the best chance for damaging winds. So I want to watch this area of Arkansas as basically the flow aloft increases. And you can certainly um, have more of a concern if you do get storm development in this region tomorrow evening. So um, we're going forward after that. This is the Updraft Felicity Swath. And uh, sorry, my phone's going off in the background. It's kind of distracting me. But um. We have where it does show the possibility of some spinning up drafts in this region in Arkansas. Okay. And it kind of shows it right into this region. And that just because you see the higher updraft felicity swath indicated right here, that doesn't mean you're going to have a tornado that's going to go from southwest Missouri all the way through Arkansas all the way to Mississippi. That's not what it means. It just it's trying to it's trying to indicate where you could have a rotating thunderstorm. Okay. And are we going to get some tornado warnings tomorrow? Not sure. We definitely need to see that. As far as rainfall, which is what a lot of people are watching want to know about, look at the Ohio Valley. Look at the, the Midwest, guys. I mean, Missouri, you could have widespread half inch to inch of rainfall totals. Look at, you know, Illinois. I mean, Chicago might get robbed a little bit, but if you're in central Illinois, central Indiana, of all of Ohio, point south, I think you'll get one widespread half inch to two inch rainfall totals. Also, some rain possible in the upper Midwest with this upper level low, which they need to rain too. But, you know, the National Weather Service indicating an area to watch out around, along the South Carolina Georgia state line that could suddenly, you know, is forecasted to get over an inch of rain in this region. 
So you guys could get a lot of rain too. Mississippi, a lot of rain. One to two inches of rain is possible. So definitely a rainy Sunday with these storms. Now, this is over the next, I'm sorry, I, I should have reiterated. This is all the way between now and Tuesday morning. So I will say that this isn't over the next 24 hours. So this is between now and Tuesday morning. But we'll certainly watch. Uh, not to leave you guys hanging out hanging out west. But we need to figure out a little bit more detail on this. Because I don't know if I believe this cluster of storms tomorrow around the Dallas-Fort Worth area and surrounding regions. But it really wants to show some pretty intense storms in this area tomorrow in North Texas. We'll see if this actually happens. Please watch this storm right here in northern Arkansas. I'm telling you, the flow aloft is increasing. And if there's going to be a storm that produces a tornado, um, it, it would be this in northern Arkansas, drifting close to the Memphis area. But watch these supercells right here in southeast Colorado tomorrow. Uh, these are going to drift and kind of maybe straddle the Kansas-Oklahoma line out here and gets, in, gets into the panhandle of Oklahoma. These could be intense. There could be one or two very photogenic intense storms right into here because produce large hail. Maybe a brief tornado, definitely some damage and wind. So please be careful in this region tomorrow for sure. Um, but speaking on the threat for Monday, a stalled frontal boundary will be the kind of the mechanism for, I think, a ton of storm activity in this entire marginal region. It's just, is there going to be ingredients for any kind of big time severe weather with this? So we'll watch this. Um, but I do think Monday will have a wide, I think Monday might could be a flooding risk with a stalled frontal boundary. We'll talk about that when we know more tomorrow. And we're also watching Tuesday, guys, for kind of a maybe a trough ejection kind of setup. We'll talk on that more detail tomorrow also. That's all I got. God bless all y'all. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you in the morning.